Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. I'm super excited for today. Been waiting for this for a very long time. The PyTop Seed has finally arrived and today we are going to unbox it and take a first look at it. Overall, I've actually been really happy with this campaign. They stuck to their timeline pretty well. There were one or two small delays here and there, but that was to make some really awesome revisions to the pie top seat, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the final product looks like. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this after we take it out of the box, because I'm just dying to unbox this thing and check out what exactly the final product looks like. And as you guys can see, the box is absolutely gorgeous. Props out to whoever designed the box. It looks awesome. I mean, that is picture perfect. Ooh, I'm just shaking with excitement. So it's in the sleeve right now. So we'll go ahead and slide it out of said sleeve. There we go. So we have a nice white box under that. And it looks like the extra acrylic panel is right here. And I will peel the uh, what looks like some sort of sticker off it in just a second. But first, let's go ahead and take this out of the box. Here we go. Let's let's do it. Oh, oh my goodness. That looks beautiful. Wow. And as you can see, I ordered the gray version. So let's go ahead and pop this thing out. Oh man, this thing just looks amazing and it's actually really light. Oh, nice thin profile. Oh, this is so awesome. I cannot wait to get this thing out on my desk and I can't wait to get it up and running either. So I'm gonna move this off to the side. We'll take a closer look at this in just a minute. You can see our Raspberry Pi 3 Model B right here, which is also included with this unit. An instruction manual shouldn't be too hard to get up and running. Power supply right here. And then we have what looks like a micro SD SD card. How big is this? 8 gigabyte micro SD card in a SD card adapter. And I think that is about it. Let me go through the box. Yep. That is it as far as package contents are concerned. First impressions are all around good. I can't find anything wrong with it at the moment. Of course, we still have to put everything together and turn this thing on. I need to throw the Raspberry Pi 3 in, but taking into consideration that this is a first production run, I mean, their ODM was nearly spot on. There are a couple rough edges here and there, like some rogue glue inside the bay area, but that's really about it. And there is one other thing that's kind of frustrating me with this, and that's the fact that I cannot peel this backing off the acrylic plate. I got the top one off, but I cannot, for the love of goodness, get the back one off. They need to put some kind of tabs on here so you can easily remove them. I've been trying for the past like five minutes and it's just stuck on here. So that's going to take a little bit of work to remove that. Oh, and this is one of my favorite parts. You guys got to join me for this. Let's liberate that 14 inch screen. Just peel it off. Oh, that feels so good. And now we need to get this thing up and running. And basically that just comprises of putting the Raspberry Pi 3 in here. And of course, if you have another uh, SBC, uh, you could also throw that in here as well. But today I'm gonna be using the Raspberry Pi 3. And I'm gonna try to do this in real time. So if you have one yourself, you can follow along with me. There's one thing I did miss in the unboxing and that's these little plastic magnetic tabs. That is to install the Raspberry Pi 3 inside the Pi Top C using this uh, rail right here. And I, it, they're just so small. I missed them uh, in the box and I had to go back and grab them because I saw it listed in the package contents and thank God I didn't throw the box away. Actually, I'm probably not gonna throw that box away because it's just gorgeous. I might put it up on the wall or something. It, it looks that good. Now we're just gonna take these magnetic clips and insert them into the Raspberry Pi. Now, according to the manual, apparently there are two versions of the Pi Top Seed shipped. One had a full-blown GPIO cable coming out right here, and one just had a couple jumpers. And as you can see, we have the model with just a few jumpers. So I'm going to have to use this little reference card right here um, to figure out where exactly these cables need to go. So I'm just going to break this off, and we're going to put it right on top of the GPIO pins. The reference card is on, that wasn't too hard. I do suggest you take a pen or pencil or something and pop all the cutouts out first. I was just trying to put it on without popping out the cutouts and I uh, I had a bad vibe coming on. I felt like I was gonna bend some pens, so I just popped them out real quick. Um, so I'm not really sure how to attack this. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in the HDMI cable first before putting it into the Pi Top C. So plugging that in, I'm gonna move these cables out of the way. We will attach those in just a minute. And it should just snap on like so. So there we go, it is in. And this is kind of awkward. I'm gonna move this around so it's not in the way. And now we're gonna plug in these jumpers. So this red and black jumper is supplying five volts to the Raspberry Pi. So that's gonna go in over here. And this should probably be moved over more. There we go, that locked in place. So that's where it belongs. 
And I'm just gonna take this and we're going to plug it in like so. It is kind of awkward, I have to say. Next, we're gonna plug in our jumper for SPI. And these do have a tiny, tiny little arrows on them to tell you where exactly they go. So I'm gonna plug that in like so. And we have one more cable uh, that is going to go right here. That moment when you completely forget to put the micro SD card in, probably should have done that first. And I've just run into the first really kind of minor quality issue. As you can see, I pulled the board off and it pulled the magnets out of the little uh, magnetic feet that we attached to the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. So that kind of sucks. I'm gonna take them and put them back in here and try to glue them down. Um, but yeah, I wonder if that's a problem with all of them. These magnets are incredibly hard to get off that magnetic bar, but I don't even think they were glued in in the first place. They kind of just snugly fit back inside the feet. So uh, that's something that I would definitely like to see in the future. Um, if they actually glue these in, that would make things a lot better. And we're gonna power it on in just a second. Don't you worry guys, but I also ordered some accessories to go along with this. I got this keyboard for nine bucks off Amazon. I just wanna see what exactly it looks like real quick. Uh, it's a JE Tech keyboard, uh, small form factor keyboard, and that looks just fine for nine bucks. And we'll plug it in and see if it actually works. And I bought a mouse as well. If you wanna check out any of these accessories, the links will be in the description for them, along with the link to actually go and buy the Pi Top C. So I have a mouse right here, keyboard and mouse, that all looks good. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Okay, so I've just run into another issue and this is what a first look is all about, seeing what we run into when we first get this thing out of the box. But they thin this down quite a bit from the original design and I think they might have made it too thin. Because as you can see, I'll try to close it uh, with the acrylic panel, I'll try to pop that over here, and all these cables get in the way. I can't get it to close. So. I might be doing something wrong is what I'm thinking. And uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this and see if I can get it to close properly. But you, you would think that's something they would have tested before they sent this out. So I don't know about that. That's, that's a little bit strange. Um, you know, that's something that should have been worked out during uh, the initial prototypes. Um, but I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. And we're gonna turn this thing on first. Just ran into another small issue. The Raspberry Pi doesn't want to stay in place when I plug in USB devices. Um, so as you guys know, it's just attached magnetically to this metal rack right here. There's nothing really holding it in place besides that. So whenever you try to plug in a USB device, it just shoves it inside the case. So check this out. Yeah, so as you can see, shoves it all the way back inside the case and you have to take the acrylic panel off and then uh, you gotta set everything back up. So that's also you know, kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. Not a huge issue, but another thing that I would like to see improved in the future. Our 18 volt power supply is plugged in. And by the way, that is capable of providing one amp. So a total of 18 watts. We're gonna go ahead and turn this thing on. Come on, give me something. And there we go, beautiful. So we're gonna give this a couple seconds to boot up into their uh, PyTop Seed operating system. It's just a Linux-based operating system. Um, and we're gonna play around with that for a little bit. By the way, that is pre-installed on that SD card, so uh, you won't have to do anything weird when you get it. Oh, that was fancy, look at that. And we're just gonna take a really brief look at this operating system, which is basically just Raspberry and Jesse with some uh, paint thrown on. Um, it's not bad, it's pretty responsive. It comes with some pretty neat pre-installed applications. Uh, this is meant to be really a learning tool. So as you can see, we have a bunch of programming IDs up here, BlueJay for Java, Scratch. Oh, I remember using Scratch a long time ago. Uh, we have some Office productivity programs right here, internet. We have the Chromium web browser installed. We have some games. Seed Universe is supposed to be a MMO, I believe, that uh, teaches you along the way. We have Minecraft Pi. It's basically just a stripped down version of Minecraft Python games. Uh, 3D Slash. Let's open that up because I found that kind of interesting. I never really heard of this application before until now, uh, but basically you can just come in here and manipulate some 3D objects, do a little bit of modeling, that kind of thing. And as you can see, graphics aren't too bad. Uh, preferences, nothing really there. And I mean, really that's about it. Once again, this is a first look. We're not gonna go too in depth with this. I'll open up Minecraft because I know someone's gonna be like, oh, you should have opened up Minecraft. All right, I'll open up Minecraft for you. There we go, building terrain. We're playing Minecraft. And as you can see, the uh, the view distance is pretty pitiful right here. <laughs> Not very far at all, oh, but something neat to be included with this operating system. I'll open up uh, Chromium 
and we'll check that out. I I want to install Ubuntu GNOME on this and see how that runs because that's no 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 no. Is it Mate? Oh, is it no more Mate that I want to install? Ah, I forget. I get I get it mixed up sometimes. I think it's Mate actually. I want to install one of those and see how that runs on this. Now, oh, by the way, it doesn't really like uh, this operating system in particular. It doesn't really like this uh, JE Tech mouse. I plugged it into my Dell Inspiron 2120, which has Ubuntu 16.04 installed, and I had no problem there. Uh, but I'll just try navigating to my website right here. So the mouse didn't really work out too well. The operating system uh, doesn't play well with it, but I'm really liking this $9 keyboard. Uh, quality's pretty good. Uh, nice feedback. Overall, pretty decent keyboard for nine bucks. Once again, the link will be in the description for that. So we'll just scroll down here. You see, it doesn't load too bad. Uh, pretty decent performance. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi 3. It's a pretty common SBC. So if you want some like benchmark results or something, go and check that out somewhere else. I'm sure there's a ton of videos and a ton of articles on it. Um, it's just so common. There's no point of doing any benchmarks or anything like that in this video. I was eventually able to get that acrylic panel to shut closed. So what I had to do was remove this card, forget about it, you're not gonna be able to get the acrylic panel to close with this card in there. So just use that as a reference, don't actually put it on top of the uh, GPIO header. Um, and then also you need to take the cables and move them into one of these little crevices inside the case. So I just moved it over here, this big clump. And then after that, with a little bit of leverage, you can get the panel on, but yeah, that's a, that's a really tight fit. They should have made this, I don't know, a couple millimeters thicker. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but as you can see, bam, it's closed. And also to get around the USB issue, I just pulled out a cheap USB hub and Velcroed it to the front of the Pi Top C. That's working just fine. So uh, if you have a USB hub laying around, just grab some Velcro, put it on there. Hey, it actually looks pretty good too. And if you want to check out this exact USB hub, once again, link in the description. Now, some of you guys are probably going, whoa, 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 hold the phone. You haven't talked about the screen yet. That's like half the Pi Top seed. We're going to address that right now. I want to use it for a little bit uh, to gain some more thoughts about the screen. And so far, I feel like it's a middle of the road display. Uh, 1366 by 768 resolution, 14 inches, pretty decent color production and pretty decent viewing angles to go along with it. I've seen better displays. I've seen a lot worse displays. Something that I like about this one in particular is that sometimes displays tend to hurt my eyes. I've been looking at this for like 30 minutes and eh, don't really notice anything. Eyes feel just fine. Uh, everything looks really sharp. It's uh, a half decent display to say the least. Just finished the video and then I realized I didn't say anything about pricing. So I'm going to mention that real quick for anyone who's actually interested in buying one of these. This can be bought for 135 bucks. The link will be in the description. Uh, it originally launched on Indiegogo at $99 and it was advertised as the world's first $99 Raspberry Pi desktop, but it has gone up since then. Uh, there are only a limited number of those, but yeah, it's still a decent value. And once again, if you want to check it out, the link will be in the description. And that's going to conclude what is now becoming a very lengthy overview. For a first production run, they came out with a pretty decent product. <laughs> it's definitely not perfect. There's some rough edges here and there, such as the fact that the magnets come out of those feet. Uh, the Raspberry Pi doesn't really stay in place when you try to plug in USB devices. Um, also, it's really hard to close that acrylic panel. That's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, they needed to leave a couple more millimeters in there. I do like the fact that it is pretty slim line, but yeah, they need to add a little bit more space. And speaking of space, there is plenty of room inside the case to add a couple prototyping boards or anything else you want. There are a ton of possibilities with this thing. And of course you could swap out the Raspberry Pi 3 for a different single board computer. Uh, lots of flexibility with this. It looks like a great educational tool. And yeah, I mean, I'm satisfied. Once again, there are some rough edges, but you know, I'm sure they will be worked out in the future. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the Pi Top team has in store for this. So that's gonna be about it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. Don't forget, this was supposed to be a first look, so I didn't go super in depth with this. I tried to hit uh, everything that I saw initially, um, but there are still some things I have to say about this, and I may, might make a uh, all out review about it. So stay tuned for that. Um, I lost it. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links. You can also use my Patreon to support me as well. And of course, don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. That's going to be about it for this video. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.